As you may know, for the last 9 months I've been working on a full course that teaches you how to make JRPGs in Unreal Engine. In this video I want to give you an overview of the entire curriculum and what you'll learn in this roughly 35 hour long course. It actually just released a few days ago and you can get it at 30% off from the link in the description for the next 20 hours only. In this short amount of time over 500 students already joined and the reception has been incredibly positive. And even if you don't get the course, this video still gives you a great overview of what steps it takes to actually make an RPG with turn-based combat. First of all, the course is broken up into two modules, with the core module having released a few days ago and the remaining six chapters of the refinement module will be delivered one by one between January and March 2026. Chapter 1 is the course overview and just sets up the foundation. Chapter 2 is the Unreal Engine 5 crash course, which is specifically aimed at people that have never used Unreal before or have taken a long break. It teaches you how to install the engine, create a new project, navigate the editor and the very basics of creating new blueprint classes and using blueprint visual scripting. So if you already have experience with Unreal or you've done one of my other courses, you can feel free to completely skip this chapter or maybe go through it at 2 times playback speed just to get a quick refresher. Chapter 3 is called Top Down Character and Field Base. Here I'll show you how to download the starter project that comes with all of the pixel art, 3D models and textures you need throughout this course already set up inside of an Unreal Engine project to save us a lot of time and frustration. I'll show you an easy way to set up version control with Git so you have a backup of your project if anything happens to your PC or files. We'll then go over the basics of object-oriented programming before making the top-down character blueprint, setting up the camera, input bindings, movement, anti-directional animations using the free Paper ZD plugin. In the next chapter we'll get into the core piece of this course which is the turn-based battle system. We'll start out by preparing the animations and battle character blueprint for our first enemy and party member type while setting up an inheritance structure that will make it easy for us to make changes or add new characters later on. To manage the battle we'll create a battle manager blueprint from scratch that will hold all of the data regarding our turn order, which characters belong to which team and so on. We'll then take care of programming the turn order and making characters move into position using timelines. Chapter 5 will be all about creating the user interface through widgets which is super important for a JRPG. After covering the basics and teaching you how to create modular and reusable widgets, we're gonna put together the turn order display, health bars, we make the action menu and we also create the target pointer. In chapter 6 we implement battle actions which means we finally make our warrior attack and also enable the enemies to attack us. And to actually update the health values we set up the entire attribute system for our characters using data assets which makes it very convenient to update and work with. We also handle things such as entering the defensive state and enabling characters to get knocked out. Chapter 7 will mostly be about improving how combat looks by learning the basics of how materials work to create a pick highlight effect. And then looking at Niagara particle effects to create this nice glowworm effect on the battlefield. We'll then also create two additional attack effects from scratch, one of them being for the enemies and one for the party members and we then use them within our game logic to spawn them at the correct time. In addition we create damage numbers and style them to improve readability of our combat and then to close things out we update the damage formula to account for defensive stats and critical strikes. Chapter 8 will be about something that most courses ignore and that is creating content. We'll create two new enemy types which are the boar and the wolf and they have quite different stats to set them apart. After that we finally create our additional two party members with the paladin mostly being a healer and the mage being a typical damage dealer. This chapter also comes with a checklist so it's easy for you to add your own enemies and characters later on. In the next chapter we upgrade the battle system to allow for multi-targeting, restoring health and so on to create unique character skills for our party members. For the warrior we make the cleave which is an aoe attack that deals moderate damage. The mage gets a fire pillar that deals high single target damage and the paladin gets two different heal skills, one of them being single target and the other one being an AOE heal. To add some polish we then update the camera system to slightly point towards the selected target making the game feel much more responsive. Chapter 10 will be the last chapter of the core module and here we go back to the field phase to flesh things out. We'll create a follower blueprint, spawn in our other party members and make them follow the player around the map. Then we create an area transition system that shows us entering a new area in the UI and also changes the connected battle map and possible enemy encounters. And of course we can't have a JRPG without random encounters, so we'll implement a distance counter and trigger random battles after traveling a certain amount of steps. To finish things off we update the forest map using the landscape and foliage tools. Next up is the refinement module which like I said will be delivered chapter by chapter between January and March 2026. So the footage I'm showing you right now is from my first pass prototype version and things might change very slightly with the final version. Here we cover more advanced topics such as creating a list style inventory which we can add items to from treasure chests or by clearing combat encounters. And we'll then set up a health potion consumable which we can use in combat to heal our party. 
Next up is XP and the level up system, which allows us to adjust the attributes of our characters and lock skills behind a level threshold. Then we'll set up the entire load and save system, which is quite advanced and will have multiple different save slots. We'll show images of the party at the time of saving and we'll do the whole thing with do you really want to overwrite the save, which is a lot more complicated than you might think. And we'll also set up a main menu with a 3D background from where we can start a new game or load a save file. There's also going to be a simple dialogue system with speech bubbles above the characters' heads, which allows us to talk to NPCs and recruit party members to follow us. And we'll also put together a simple cutscene when a warrior arrives in the village to teach you how to use the sequencer. The last chapter will be about polishing everything up by refactoring some blueprints, improving the UI navigation, adding free environments from the marketplace, adding sound effects, balancing the game and sending you off into your final assignment, which is setting up the fourth party member, the Dwarven Ranger. And all of these systems are created using best practices whenever possible to set up a solid foundation you can then build upon to add your own characters, additional mechanics and so on. Again, the course is currently 30% off for the next two days only, so make sure to check it out from the link in the description.